When you look at rappers who were active in the 80s, you can almost count on one hand the ones who are still releasing music today and have any real modern relevance outside of being just an old school legend. You have Too Short, Cool G Rap, De La Soul, Cool Keith, Garface, and Master Ace. Now I'm sure I might be missing a few, but even so, you can argue that Master Ace has had the greatest career out of any of them. He was a member of rap's first supergroup, The Juice Crew, back in the late 80s, and he didn't even really reach his peak until nearly 20 years later. His career is a fascinating look into longevity in hip-hop, reinventing himself numerous times, all while giving us some of the greatest albums in hip-hop history along the way. While being consistently underappreciated by the masses, those who know hip-hop know him as one of the greatest rappers of all time, with Eminem even citing him as one of his main influences. He has carved out a one-of-a-kind career that's based off of perseverance, creativity, and a mastery of the skill of MCing. Duval Clear is a rapper and producer hailing from Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York. In December of 1986, while on winter break from the University of Rhode Island, Ace competed in a rap contest that would go on to change his life forever. The contest was held at United Skates of America, a roller rink in Queens, and being a broke college student, he had his eyes on the second place prize of $500. To Ace's surprise, he won first place, and the prize was far greater than the money he was hoping for. He won six hours of studio time with one of the most important people in hip hop history, Marley Marl. It took him almost a full year to get a hold of Marley and get in the studio, but once he did, he made an immediate impression. By 1988, Marley had assembled the Juice Crew, an Avengers-like team of 80s rap powerhouses, featuring the likes of MC Shan, Big Daddy Kane, Biz Marquee, Cool G Rap, Master Ace, and more. The Symphony, which is one of rap's first and possibly best posse cut, features iconic verses from some of the group's best members, but it's most notable for being the first time that the world heard Master Ace rhyme. His verse comes first, and he puts his foot through the track, letting hip hop know that he belongs with these elite MCs. Listen closely, so your attention's undivided. Many in the past have tried to do what I did. Just the way I came off then, I'm gonna come off. Stronger and longer, even with the trouble. Ace had two solo tracks on Marley's In Control album, and his debut album Take a Look Around was not too far behind, releasing in July of 1990. Here Ace becomes the first Juice Crew member to have co-production credits with Marley on his whole album. Me and the Biz is probably the most known song on the project. Biz Marquis was actually supposed to be on the song with him, but when Biz couldn't make it to the studio, Ace took it upon himself to do a Biz Marquis impression on the record. Hey, it's me, the diabolical. Yes, Charlotte. Yes, it's time yes. for me to fall into a funky beat to make you have a ball and like jump. Make you move your rump on the floor and like pump. This song definitely gets some flack for being a little corny, especially with the puppet in the music video, but I think it's a great example of how creative of a writer and performer Ace is. He embodies the way that Biz raps, and it's just a taste of the one-of-a-kind concepts and creative execution that Ace gives us on his later projects. This album definitely feels very late 80s, and Ace does his thing, but remember, this is only the first evolution of Ace's sound and career. He completely reinvents his career, sound, and style on his next project with a new group called Master Ace Incorporated. The group features Ace, as well as Lord Digga, Paula Perry, Ice U Rock, and Lachey, who Ace actually ended up marrying in 2001, and they have been together ever since. Their 1993 album Slaughterhouse is one of the most underrated albums of the 90s. It's a loose concept record, addressing the growing gangster rap trends, getting more and more violent. This album is hard as hell. Ace provides some production under his alias Ace One, and his rapping is aggressively focused and powerful, all while giving us big L level punchlines and quotables. Brainiac dum dums plus the scientific approach to the course and the force is centrifugal. Can you find your way through the lyrics that be catching them? Throw another rhyme across the room, they be fetching them. G Bass is the best song on the record, but it's actually its remix which became the biggest song of Ace's career. Born to Roll is a remix featuring more West Coast inspired production and became a smash hit, peaking at number 23 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Dum dums bust the scientific approach to the course and the force is centrifugal. Can you find your way through the lyrics that be catching them? Throw another rhyme across the room, they be catching them. This song helped Ace gain a worldwide fan base 
Before this, he was slowly becoming an East Coast legend, but this song gave him fans from all over. Mass Days Incorporated his next and final album together, titled Sitting on Chrome, had two more singles reach the Billboard Hot 100, and the album itself got to number 69 on the Billboard 200, so this is definitely the peak of Ace from a popularity standpoint. This album had a much smoother feel, definitely inspired more from that West Coast bag, feeling like a New York offshoot of G-Funk. This album's smoother feel exemplifies just how versatile Ace is. There's no doubt in my mind that if he wanted to, he could have had an impressive mainstream career too, but he chose to stay in the underground. In 1997, Ace was getting ready to release his next solo album under Big Beat Records. After playing the album for his label, they wanted him to go in a more mainstream direction. When Ace told them that he wanted to keep the sound that he intended, they unfortunately dropped him. This was by far the lowest point in Ace's career. He was considering retirement, with plans of working at a label or something within the industry. He had his resume all set, but then he went on what was intended to be one last European tour in 2000. While in Europe, every stop on his 13 city tour was packed with fans who knew every word of his songs, and Ace was blown away. In seeing the response that his fans had to him, it gave him new life and new creative energy to keep making his art for the public. In 2001, Ace started off the next and probably the best era of his career. He released Disposable Arts in October of 2001, and it's one of the greatest concept albums of all time. The story of the album follows a young Brooklyn man's release from prison, his return home, and his life at the Institute for Disposable Arts, a school for hip-hop that he enrolls in. Ace is a master at creating concept records. His albums tell full, cohesive, and interesting stories from start to finish, but each of the individual songs stand together on their own. And creatively, this is where Ace enters his prime, giving us song concepts about a variety of topics with expert lyricism and delivery. You have songs like Block Episode and Take a Walk, which vividly details the tough situation on Ace's block in Brooklyn, Acknowledge, which is one of my favorite diss tracks ever against the MC Boogeyman, Alphabet Soup, which uses every letter of the alphabet in his verse, and Dear Diary, which is an incredible exercise in hip-hop writing, where he essentially writes a diss track against himself rapping in third person from the perspective of his diary, and the part of him that doubts that he has what it takes to make it in rap. Hey yo Ace, don't tell me you thinking about a return, I'm kinda concerned, when will you old cats ever learn? It's time to hang it up when you stand on your last leg, when you don't write on the reg and the future is past dead. This album from front to back is a showcase in some of the best writing and most creative concepts that hip hop has ever seen, and he was only just beginning. His follow-up record, titled A Long Hot Summer, is a prequel to Disposable Arts, detailing the character's rise to fame and brush with crime that got him locked up in the beginning of the first record. This album, just like the previous one, has a great story stringing the whole thing together from front to back. And again, each song individually holds its own. This album has a ton of great summer feeling songs like De Grind, Hood, and Beautiful, but the best song in my opinion is Soda and Soap. This track is possibly the best example of Master Ace's incredible concepts, as he incorporates 15 soda names into his first verse and over a dozen soap brands into his second. I met this girl named Fantasy on Wall Street from Tahiti, a real Tahitian treat. She had a lot of Pepsi, honey was peace, and she told me she liked my smile like Shanice. Master Ace actually wrote this song for Will Smith for his album Willennium. Will passed on this one, but Ace did write the song Uh for Smith on the same project. Over the next few years, Ace went back into his collaborative bag, teaming up with Ed OG for their project Arts and Entertainment. This is a very slept on project, with the two veteran MCs giving us some great throwback hip hop. It's a whole album of them going back and forth with dope punchlines and concept tracks. Ace also was a member of the group EMC, consisting of more underground New York veterans hailing from the lyricist lounge scene, Wordsworth, Strickland, and Punchline, who left the group in 2014. The MC has a handful of really underrated tracks, and if you're a fan of Master Ace, then these are must-listens. Their debut, The Show, from 2008 is my favorite, but their 2014 EP, The Turning Point, as well as their 2015 album, The Tonight Show, are great as well, with the latter being a dope concept record about the group appearing on The Tonight Show, hosted by comedian Russell Peters. In July of 2012, Ace returned with his next solo album, M.A. Doom, Son of Avon an album that's dedicated to his late mother, composed entirely of Master Ace rhymes and MF Doom beats. This might be my personal favorite Master Ace record. Doom's beats complement him perfectly, and his rhymes are so personal here. This is another one of Ace's masterful concept records, transporting the listener back in time to the days when Ace was growing up and getting into music by listening to his mom's records. One of my favorite Ace songs ever is Slow Down. The Doom beat he raps on is an odd one. 
it progressively gets slower between each hook as it goes on. Ace expertly uses this quirk in the beat as a piece of his storytelling, weaving a tale about him getting drugged, so the beat slowing down was literally putting us into the mind state of his character, in a way that's super cinematic. Katie start kissing and feeling on the girlfriend That's when the room starts spinning like a whirlwind Feel like I'm an earl then, I fall face down Not cool dude, I'm new from the waist down Look up drooling, I feel like an asshole Katie got my wallet in her hand, is my cash flow Following this record, Ace released the following season in May of 2016, produced by Kick Beats. This is yet another awesome concept record from Ace, taking us back to his days as a high schooler. This album even has skits from characters from A Long Hot Summer, so this can be considered another prequel in the same storyline from his other solo records. By this time, Ace has solidified himself over the decades as an elite staple of the underground. Since his return in 2001, it seemed like nothing could stop him, but throughout it all, he was actually battling a severe disease. In 2000, Ace was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, a disease that he's been living with since. He kept this diagnosis a secret from his friends and fans for about 13 years. And when he finally decided to let the world know, he used it to inspire himself and his fans to persevere. He details his fight in the track Fight Song, where Pharaoh Manch embodies the disease so that Ace can face his illness one on one. A powerful track that truly only masked Ace and Pharaoh Manch could make together. I'm the amalgamation of pain and fatigue culminating in your brain. I'm a disease. I'm magnetic, it resonates in my imagery. I won't be drained, I know we came from my energy. Ignore the pain, I won't be slain by my enemy. My eyes closed, I'm having talks with the inner me. This track comes from Ace's most recent album, Brooklyn Story, with Marco Polo. Marco and Ace have years of chemistry, most notably from their collaboration on one of my favorite Ace songs, Nostalgia. And this album is a dope homage to Ace's hometown, from the perspective of Marco Polo, with this record story following his move to Brooklyn from Canada. And that brings us to the modern day, over 30 years of hip-hop perfection, and one of the greatest discographies of all time. And also, before I forget, I am a Master Ace super fan, so I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the Hits You Miss series. As great as Ace is at crafting all these detailed concept albums, sometimes it's dope just hearing him go in on a fun 16. And that's just what these projects are full of. Quotable after quotable, metaphor after metaphor, some of my favorite verses of all time are on here. Master Ace recently turned 55 years old, and I challenge you to find another rapper who's 55 or older who's still rapping as good as Master Ace. I'm not sure if he's planning on releasing any music soon, or any music in the future at all, but I really hope he does. He's one of the few rappers who really helped me fall in love with hip hop back in the day. I rarely see Ace get mentioned in people's top 10s, or even their top 50s, but to me, he has everything that I want in an MC. Versatility, consistency, and lyricism that makes you want to listen again, and again, and again. Master Ace truly is a master MC. Thank you for watching everybody. As always, if you enjoyed the video and want to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, that is always appreciated. Let me know what your favorite Master Ace album is down in the comments. As always, I try to put out a video every one to two weeks, so I got a lot headed your way. Thanks for watching.